we're all looking for our person. Like we're literally trying to find the one. And in today's video, we are gonna break down seven ways on how to know if he's the one. Everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Keeping It Real with Keandra. I am your host, licensed marriage and family therapist, Keandra Jackson. Now look, before we even get into this list, the first thing that I need to talk to you guys about is making sure that you know what you want before you go looking for Mr. Right. Knowing and understanding what you are looking for first is going to make this process so much easier. Because let's be honest, you can't find the one if you don't know your likes, your wants, your desires, your non-negotiables, the characteristic that you want in the man. You need to be crystal clear before anything else. So essentially, you need to know what type of partner you are looking for, but let's get into this list. Now, please believe that these are not in any particular order, but the first way to know if he's the one is attraction. Now, some of y'all are real superficial and you're only thinking about physical or sexual attraction. That is a thing. But you need to be attracted to the person in some capacity, whether that is emotionally, mentally, physically, whatever the case may be. Having some type of attraction to your partner is going to be one of the telltale signs that he may be the one. I have been in situations where a person wasn't as physically attractive as some of my previous relationships, but I spent quality time with that person. They made me laugh. I love their personality and they grew on me. So you need to be open to what that attraction looks like for you. It don't matter what other people say, as long as you find him fine, as long as you find him mentally stimulating, as long as you find him whatever, nobody else's opinion matter because they don't gotta be in relationship with him, you do. I personally feel that when you have found the one, I'm talking about the one, not just for the one that's right now, there is like this spiritual pull, this magnetic pull that happens between you two. So there is a connection there on a spiritual level. There's a connection there mentally, emotionally, physically, relationally. You are drawn to this person and it may look funky on the outside and the process of you guys getting together may be a little tricky, but that doesn't negate the, the attraction that magnetic the pull that is happening in between both of you guys so don't be superficial because this one is not just about appearance number two the second way that you know you have found the one is that you guys are going to challenge each other when you found the one he is going to pull you to your greatest potential he is going to push you towards your greatness he is going to encourage you to go to the next level he's going to make sure that you are being your best sense of self at all times even when you don't feel like it he's going to gently challenge you to level up in every area because he doesn't want to see you be on a lower level he wants to consistently see you grow into the woman that you were destined to be now that also means you're going to do the same thing for him so this is a positive sign because he is going to support your aspirations your goals and whatever it is that God put on the inside of you so it's important to know that the qualities of the one is going to make sure that you are not just being basic and he wants you to be your best sense of self at all times the third way on how to know if he's the one you guys are going to put in equal effort or I would like to say a mutual exchange that means both partners, both people, you and him are going to pour into each other equally. I didn't say the same and I didn't say all the time is going to be equal, but there is going to be a pour. You're going to pour in, he's going to pour in, and that is going to allow you to go to that next level that we were just talking about in the previous one. If you're finding that you're giving, 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 and giving some more and he's doing zero, then chances are he may not be the one because the man who wants you, the man who is for you, he is going to put in that work to not only get you, but to keep you. This mutual exchange that I'm talking about understands that there are going to be seasons and times where your energy is low, where your emotional capacity is low, and he has more to give, and that's going to be great. And there's going to be other times where you're going to have a lot to give, and he may be going through something. You'll have to pour into him. It doesn't mean that this is 
uneven, but it just understands that relationships have to be harmonious and understand the power of seasons. No relationship is going to be equal, equal, 100 percent all the time. Right. It's just not going to happen. There's going to be times where it's going to be 90, 10, 80, 20, 50, 50, whatever, just because life happens. Right. There's there's going to life is going to be lifey. So just understand that you're going to be wanting to be with someone who understands that concept and not having you pour out more than what he is going to pour back into you. A fourth way on how you will know if he's the one is that he won't hide things. Being vulnerable and emotionally open with your partner is so important. I can't stress to you how when you find the one, he is going to want to share with you. He's going to want to be open with you. He's going to want to share with you some things that he's never told anybody, some stuff in his childhood and his upbringing, some of his struggles, some of his weaknesses. He's going to want to share those things with you, not because... He thinks that you're going to throw it back in his face at a later time, but because you're a safe place. I had another interview on my other show, the Keandra Jackson show, where I was talking with David Burris and he talked about women being home for a man, meaning I, and it's not a location, right? It's not like, oh, we live in New York and he come home to me. No, home is a safe place. That means regardless of what is happening in the world, especially if you're a person of color or a black man. And the world is beating you up and doing all of these things. When you come home, you don't want to have to fight your partner, not literally fight, but you don't want to have to argue and fight your partner in your home either. This should be a safe space where he can land, where he can rest. He can put his guard down because he knows his woman has his back 100%. Sharing those thoughts, those fears, the dreams, and you reciprocating those things because that's going to help deepen you guys' connection is an absolute sign that he could be the one. The fifth way on how to know if he's the one is there's going to be strengths and weaknesses. In every single relationship, God is not going to put two people on the same page at the same time who is perfect in every single way. From what I have seen in my own personal life and the clients and from a professional aspect is that typically when God puts two people together, he's typically putting somebody together who's strong in a particular area. This person needs that area to be improved upon. And vice versa, this person might be very strong in a particular area and very good at doing a certain thing, but this might be the area where that person struggles. And it's a perfect match. We think it wouldn't be, but it's a perfect match because that person who is stronger on a particular level is able to help and assist the other person. So understanding that strengths and weaknesses is not a bad thing. One, you should know your own strengths and weaknesses. So should the other person. So that means when you guys come together, you can say, okay, babe, I know that you're stronger with finance. And so that might be something that you can handle. But for me, I'm better at taking care of the household, right? And so understanding where our strengths and weaknesses lie so we won't clash. Before I move on, this isn't about changing the other person because some people are like, ooh, your weakness sucks (laughs) and you need to change. Now, there are some weaknesses that we need to improve upon and be better. But if the whole thing is just about changing and making that person to the person that you want them to be and not embracing them for who they are, that could be a problem long term. The sixth way on how to know if he's the one is that he is going to draw you closer to God. Now, this part and this conversation may not be for everybody if you're not a person of faith, but that person is not going to pull you away from God. That person is going to push you to God. That person is going to encourage you to have a deeper relationship. That person is going to encourage you to go deeper in your faith, whether that's reading the Bible or some type of sacred text, praying, going to some place of worship, whether you're going to church or a mosque or whatever, they are going to push you towards God because they understand that that is the source of all things. And I firmly believe that if you keep God at the center of it all, (laughs) at the center and at the root of your relationship, a lot of the other issues that may come along is going to be resolved because you know that this person is the person that God put in your life, but also you know that you can go to God on that partner's behalf. That person can go to God on your behalf. You guys can do things together to strengthen your spiritual connection. And that's very important. So praying, fasting, reading your word, going to church, doing whatever you need to do and making sure that you and your partner is on the same page about that, game changer. And the seventh way on how to know if he's the one is that it will be work. 
some of y'all not gonna like this <laughs> because what I have seen, people have these fairy tale lovey dovey stories of like, I met him and I met her and we locked eyes across the room and we got married and we had kids and we had a house with a white picket fence and we walked into the sunset happily ever after. A lot of the love stories, especially the people who are supposed to be together and are put together by God, they had a little bit of a rocky start. I'm not saying that this is the status quo because there's exceptions to every rule. There's always different scenarios and outliers to these types of conversations. But every, almost everybody that I know, they had a bit of a rocky start. Somebody didn't really like somebody. Somebody may have been in a relationship or a situationship. They had some unresolved trauma or some issues from their previous relationship. Like it was a little bit of a rocky start before they actually got together. But once they got together, it was ease and flow. Once they got together, they understood that this person was for them and they were for that person. And no matter what happens in life, no matter what comes our way, this is the person that I want to do life with. We may face challenges, but one thing we're going to do is overcome these difficult together. We might have curveballs, but we're going to strengthen our bond and our resiliency together. We may have bumps and humps and dumps in the road, but we are not going to give up and we are going to take on every challenge together. So understanding that it will be work is definitely a telltale sign that he may be the one. Now notice I didn't say hard work because y'all know I'm not a big fan of saying relationships are hard work, hard work, hard. If you think something is hard, it's going to be hard. <laughs> so I like to say relationships are work because they are work, but two people willing to put in the work at all times is going to be the foundation of a beautiful, long-term, successful partnership. Let me give my final thoughts on this before we end. I know this list was not extensive and it didn't include everything, but I really hope a few things on this list was kind of a green flag, was kind of an indicator for you to let you know if the person you are dealing with currently is the one or someone that you may meet in the future. And you got to go back and be like, oh, let me look at that video Keandra made to see if he is checking off some of these boxes. This is a good video to keep coming back to. Send it to your homegirls to make sure that you and your whole tribe is with the person that you guys are supposed to be with. So let's do away with all of these situationships, staying in relationships that no longer serve us and get to the goodness of a long-term, committed, amazing, harmonious, partnership. So thank you so much for watching another episode of Keeping It Real with Keandra. I will see you next time. Be blessed. Bye.